Welcome back to the vlog guys, poker vlog number 22. This one it's going to be a little bit of a different type of video. I'm going to be traveling across the country to Portland to play some poker. But before we get into the poker, I'm going to show you a little bit about what we did around Portland. We went to a little bar in the basement and they actually had a comedy show. Along with some drinking and some comedy, we also got outside and explored nature. We also explored some inside nature when we went cave hiking. A Little bit of a different experience, so I recommend it. Super cool and serene. But don't worry, here's the poker you guys were waiting for. We arrive at Portland Poker Room. Just kidding, that's not what it's called. Portland Meadows, one of the premier poker rooms in Portland. And we're also meeting another vlogger here. His name is MD Poker, or Mark. Shout out to Mark, I hit him up and he said he would come out and play with me, so we're going to hop right into the 1-3 game while we wait for Mark. And we get right into the action, a few hands in, we pick up pocket jacks on the button. There's a few limps to me, so I decided to open the action up to $16. With this raise, small blind and the big blind are going to get out of the way, but the under the gun one limper, the hijack, and the cutoff are all going to put in the call for $16. So that really didn't do the jobs so I think sizing up to maybe 20 next time will be the right size either way we're going four ways to a flop and that's a pretty innocent flop and three deuce nine rainbow when the action's gonna check to me I just had to see bet for fifteen dollars think this is a blunder should be going twenty to twenty five dollars but either way it does the job when just the under the gun player under the gun one makes the call, so we eliminated two players out of the hand. When we go to the turn, heads up. That's not my favorite card. The ace of spades. A lot of her drawing hands, like those four fives, get there, but I shouldn't really be scared of too many ace-x combos that she has here. So when she checks, I decide to keep the pressure on and continue with a bet of $40. Now with this bet, she decides to make the call rather quickly. Uh, I'm not sure what types of hands she should be calling me with. Probably 2-3, maybe a set, but I feel like those hands would want to raise this turn. And now, interestingly enough, when the 7 of spades roll up, rolls off in the river, she leads for $100. I honestly can't put my opponent on a hand. So, in scenarios like this where you're thinking of hands your opponent can have and you can't put them on one, it's usually never a bluff. I don't see my opponent calling down two streets just to bluff me off a hand on the river. So looking back, I think this should just be a fold. There's not many bluffs that she has. Even those missed draws, maybe eight, nine. I don't even, I think seven, nine. I have zero idea what types of bluff hands she has here. So I think I just wanted to get the information out of her to see what type and she's repping and I flick in the call and we're showing the devastating news she flips over the hold ace deuce suited uh, well played by my opponent and I just got call happy there should just be a straightforward fold there's really no bluffs on that river and we lose a pretty big one the first hand we decided to see change across the table and look who decided to show up to the left there he is MD poker mark he just made a great check back in this clip here and lost the minimum versus two pair, but what are you going to do? He looks like he already has a healthy stack less than like 30 minutes in, and we're going to be battling with him a little bit. We're already dealt a premium hand. Under the gun one, we open the $10, and now the middle position decides to ship it all in for about 50 Folds back around to me, and I pretty much snap call when it gets to me. I'll never be folding ace jack, even though it's offsuit. For 50 bucks we just got to see what he's trying to shove with and it's actually a race he has pocket sevens but don't worry ace on the flop we're pretty much good until the seven 
He hits the two outer and we lose that $100 pot. I wanted to show this bomb right here on the dealer button because every time those cross paths, the dealer gets to choose what game. And most of the time it's 5-2-2 two, two, and everyone gets five cards, pretty much like a PLO, but there's no limit to what you can bet. And there's going to be a few of those in this session. This first one, you look down at 8-7-7-5 ace. So you just saw the boards. We flopped a set and an open ender on the one board, but not much on the other board. When action checks to me, I got to protect my set. I just had to bet 15. And we're going to get one call from the button, call from the small blind, call from the big blind, call from under the gun, under the gun one luckily folds, and then middle position calls as well. So we're still going seven ways to the flop or to the turns, and those are not my favorite turns. We see the five of clubs on the top and the king of clubs down low. So now that takes another one of my boat outs away with the five. We already have one in our hand and we have an eight. So we really are drawing slim on that bottom board. And we only have a pair of fives on the top board. So when action checks to me, I decide to check it. And now the button decides to ship it all in for just about a hundred dollars. Debating what I want to do, I do block the straight on the bottom and I have a set, so I just put in the call. I'm assuming I need some help here, and we just have to pray to the poker gods at this point. On the top, we see the queen of spades and the five of hearts. Oh my gosh, we boat up on the bottom with our pocket sevens, and our opponent sews the straight. So he flopped the straight, and we literally got so lucky hitting probably a three outer on the bottom to chop this pot so another opponent actually said he folded pocket kings for a better set and luckily we're gonna chop this pot probably one of my worst calls in my life hundred dollars with a set and a bomb pot but we got lucky we'll take it in this next hand there's a straddle from the button to my right i'm in the small blind with king nine of clubs i decided to complete the straddle for four more dollars Mark's going to fold in the big line. The under the gun one player is going to make the call, the cutoff, and the button checks his options. So we're going four ways to a flop. Of 7-5 deuce with two clubs, I decide to check this with my flush draw. And action's going to check to the cutoff who bets $10. Button folds. I put in the call with my king high flush. Could be a raise sometimes with two overs. I decide to just call, and the under the gun player folds. So heads up to the turn which is the four of clubs, we get there right away. I decide to check, my opponent jams for like 50, I snap call, and we go to the river, which is a pretty clean one, the queen, and he shows some random hand, maybe a five, and we take it down with the king high flush. Poker is pretty easy when you make hands. Here's our current stack, not too much going on so far, but don't worry, these bomb pots help out greatly. Mark's doing pretty good though. Here we go, right into one of those aforementioned bomb pots. We see two boards, three eight queen with two spades, and five six four with two clubs. Look down at our hand, and we flop a straight on the bottom board. We flop a straight with seven eight on the bottom, and we have that flush draw on top with eight ten of spades, as well as the pair of eights. So we have a decent hand going on for us, and when the action checks to the middle position one player. He bets out for $10. Now the hijack calls $10. I can't have people drawing for this cheap, so I just had to raise to 50 This could just be a call, but I have the nuts on one board and decent hand on the next. And now Mark to my left on the button is going to make the cold call. Just super strong in my opinion. He either has a set or a high flush draw on one of the boards, or both of the boards, so I should be proceeding with caution. And after he calls, the action's gonna fold back around to that middle position one player who makes the call. Luckily, we get one opponent out of there with the hijack. He makes the fold. So, still three ways to the turns. Turn is the six of spades on the top, so we turn our flush, and the ace of clubs on the bottom, so a pretty terrible card on the bottom. While we do still have a straight, one of our opponents can easily have that flush on the bottom. And 
potentially a higher flush on the top. So when the middle position one player checks to me, I'm thinking of a sizing to go with, but oh wait, just kidding, he didn't check to me. He leads out for $50. Pretty awkward spot in my eyes. I have a flush, but on the bottom board, I'm probably drawing dead to a flush that one of my opponent has with the clubs. But I don't think I can be going anywhere, so I put in the 50 and Mark to my left makes the call as well. So a pretty sizable pot here brewing. Still going three ways to the rivers, which is the seven of clubs and the three of clubs. These are actually not terrible cards in my eyes as it reduces the likelihood my opponents have flushes on the bottom board where I have the straight. And now the middle position decides to jam all in for about $80. And I don't really think I can be going anywhere after I played my straight and my flush this way. Uh, I'm just getting such a good price. I hate this spot, but what am I going to do? Like, Am I just going to fold for $80 into a $400 pot? I don't think that'd be smart. While I am a newbie at these bomb pot multi-card games, I think this should just always be a call. I can never be folding. Maybe I could with Mark behind me, but I didn't want to fold in the Mark folds and I look like an idiot, so we put in the call. After I put in the call, Mark didn't snap fold, so I'm praying for a fold, but in the end, he has too strong of a hand and he puts in the call as well, saying he's probably no good, but no, Mark, you're good. I'm no good. And my opponent to the right flips over a high flush on the top and Mark flips over a queen or an ace high flush on the bottom. So we knew our straight was no good and that 10 high flush was also no good. So we're gonna lose this massive pot and I learned my lesson in these bomb pot games to pretty much have the nuts or you're gonna lose. So nice hands by my opponents and we lose this one. Pretty tilted after that last bomb pot. So when it comes to me, I'm going to play the same game, 5-2-2. Two, two. We see two flop, 5-jack-2 two with two spades, and queen-deuce-9. We looked down at our hand. We have jack-5, deuce-4, 10. So we flop top two on the top with jack-5. And we flop that open ender on the bottom with jack-10. In this game, you can use two cards on either board. You can mix and match. So when action checks to me, I decide to lead out for 15, trying to get this pot built with my top two and my open ender. I'm not really scared of many turn cards. And Mark in the small blind is going to make the call. Along with the big blind, the under gun one, middle position, middle position one. Luckily, the hijack folds and the cutoff calls as well. So we're still going seven ways to the flop or to the turns and those are some magical turns we see the jack of diamonds up top and the ace of diamonds down low so now we turn the nuts on the top jacks full of fives and we pick up a straight draw on the bottom with the ace and the deuce we have four fives so we have a gutter to the three we still have an open ender with the jack ten on the bottom and we also have a pair of deuces i forgot to mention that on the bottom so a deuce in the bottom will give us trips and action is going to check all the way around to me again and we got to size up with our nuts on the top get some more money in this pot we decide to bet sixty dollars hoping this price will string some opponents along and sure enough it does mark in the small blind decides to make the call once again and it's going to fold around to that middle position player who's going to make the call the rest of the opponents are going to get out of the way as they suspect something is up. Three ways to the river and think of the perfect river card on both and that's what we get. The jack up top and the king down low. We turn or we river the nuts on both boards with the jack of hearts and the king of diamonds. We hit our straight and we hit quads so we're pretty much undefeated at this point and when both opponents decide to check to me there's really not much thought into this, not much poker analysis. We're all in <laughs> for about $230, $40, and hoping to get some action, but 
Mark is too good. He knows his full house is no good with his pocket fives, he tells me later. And when it gets to the middle position player, he decides that his hand is good enough, and he makes the call. Okay, I'll call Your man. I have nuts and nuts. Oh, Ooh, 10 and the... Uh, oh, probably. Oh, that is That's why I couldn't find the jack. Because he got check order. Here's our current stack after that massive bomb pot scoop. Looking at about $700. Here's Mark's update, but don't worry, there's still time left to battle with him. In this next hand, we have Jack King off in the middle position one. Sorry, I just had to say it. There's a limb from under the gun. Undergone one opens to 12. I decide to make the call. Could be a three bet spot to not let other opponents in behind me, but I just decided to call and the big blind and the limper decide to call as well. So we're going four ways to a flop. That's a decent flop. Three, five, jack, with two hearts. We don't have a heart in our hand, but when all three opponents check to us, we get a bet our top pair to protect it. We decide to bet $20. The big blind is going to go ahead and make the call for 20. The limper is going to fold, and the original razor is going to make the call as well. So we're still going three ways to the turn. It's not my favorite turn. The queen of clubs. Well, it is an over card. I think I should be continuing to barrel and not give away the strength of my hand that I just have a jack. But I decided to check back. And the river comes, the six of clubs. Pretty inconsequential. When the big blind checks, the original rager thinks his hand is good enough to bluff with. He decides to bet $30. I'm not seeing what types of hands he'll have here. I feel like a queen would have just bet the turn. Oh, he actually bet 40 I'm sorry. And I'm not a believer. He's been bluffing all night. I put in the call. Big blind folds. He says you get it. And we win with our jack. In the last hand of the night, we have ace, six of clubs. We're in under the gun one. I decided to limp this hand. Sometimes I'll be raising it and opening it, but I decided to limp call this. And the middle position one raises it to 13. The small blind gets out of the way, and the big blind makes the call. So we're going four ways to a flop. That's a decent flop. Five, six, ten, rainbow. Big blind checks. I decide to check, and the initial aggressor decides to bet $20. The hijack is going to get out of the way. Big blind makes the call, and I make the call as well with a pair. Not too much thought here. The turn is another innocent card in the three of hearts. When the big blind checks, I don't think there's much to do other than check. And that's what I do. The initial aggressor now decides to check as well, so I think he's pretty much given up on the hand with two overs. I mean, the river comes the deuce of spades. While there is a one-liner to a four, I'd assume the big blind would lead out if he had a four here, but he decides to check, so... Now I'm going to give the initial aggressor the green light to go ahead and bluff with his two overs that I think he has. And he does take the bait when I checked in. He decides to bet $30. When the big blind gets out of the way, I think my decision is pretty straightforward. Most 10s would have bet the turn, so he's pretty much repping an over pair or nothing. When I flick in the call, he says I'm good, and ace-6 takes it down versus ace-king. So we got lucky with that 6, and I'm glad we found the hero call. Guys, just got done with that session here at Portland Meadows. Honestly, a pretty dead session, but it was fun getting to meet Mark, another vlogger out here in Portland. I'll link his channel down below. He's a super cool guy. I'm glad he made it out here and we could link up, but there were some interesting hands. Luckily, I got lucky rivering the nuts on both boards, so that hand saved my night, but can't complain. Not sure, I might add this on to another video. So if not, keep watching, but if not, thanks for watching and peace.